This is Spotlight, Women Tech Makers series on career and professional development. I'm Caitlin, and today I'm joined by Jessica, who's a developer advocate at Google. Jessica, welcome to Spotlight. Thanks for having me. Really appreciate it. We're excited to get this conversation started. So um, to lead off, can you talk to us a little bit about where you started your career? I started my career working in nonprofit. So I was working with people and supporting them, primarily working with at risk female youth for five years. And then the last five years of my career before I transitioned to tech was working with folks who had mental health challenges. And then after that, I decided to pivot and then go into tech. So I've been in tech for five years. What was that inflection point? When did you decide that this 10-year career path that you had had was not ultimately uh, the, the place you wanted to keep moving? It's a lot of work to be in mental health. And I have a hard time kind of keeping myself and other people's pain separate. And so I, I know I worked on that a lot um, as I was in that career, but that's when I realized, you know, this is not something I could do sustainably for many years. And so I did the most I could, the best I could at that time. And um, around, I want to say like the four year mark, that's when I was thinking about going to doing something else. At that time, my partner was getting his master's in computer science. And he was kind of going, hey, why don't you look into this whole tech thing and like consider it? Because I know you really like doing things. When we first met um, in college, I, I was interested in computers, but never thought that I would have pursued a career in, in anything technical. When you were kind of making those, you, know, you had a lot of different choices that you were considering and tech was one of them. So what ultimately drew you to tech um, and away from some of those other options? It's funny how um, there was a conversation that I had with a friend of mine. I was telling her about like, I'm looking at different career paths and, you know, I'm kind of in this weird spot. And she told me how she had dinner with a gal that had just recently graduated from a software boot camp. And I was like, a software boot camp? I don't want to work out. <laughs> like, I'm looking for a career. <laughs> and um, that's when I was like, let me Google this and see kind of what this is all about. And I applied hesitantly. Once they, I got the email that I got accepted, I was like, I really want this. Yeah, that's that's kind of how it started, a conversation that somebody had at a dinner, at an event to support women in tech. Coming off of that boot camp, um, what were you thinking in terms of next steps? How did you sort of make a decision of what to do next? When it comes to the next steps, I was very fortunate where the boot camp I went to there's like a teacher part of me inside of me where during the boot camp on Saturdays, I was like, I'm going to just go to the boot camp because I had moved to the city and I knew nobody besides people in my boot camp. So I was like, well, I'm going to just go on Saturdays and go study. And if anyone wants to come and join me, they could. And so those Saturday sessions ended up turning into mini teaching classes that I would do with a handful of folks, uh, other students. So uh, the boot camp actually offered me a job to work there. And that's where I had to sit down and go, do I stay and potentially teach as a TA or do I go and find a career as an engineer? And that was very, very challenging because I, I went to the boot camp to become an engineer, but I really enjoyed the supporting and teaching and education part. And also I was like, wait, I just paid you a lot of money. Now you're going to pay me to do the same curriculum? I was like, this sounds too good to be true. Like, I can always find an engineering job later. Like, that could help. Wait, this opportunity wouldn't. Uh, it's not every day someone asks you to, to teach um, specifically after you just went through the program. So I saw it more as a, an opportunity, really. And so I decided to stay there. And I always knew I, I can't stay there forever. And so I always kind of kept my eye out on how can I strategically put energy and effort into that next step. And that big step is really the technical interview. And I, I was terrified of that. So I really leaned into those concepts. So when that cohort, um, that the first time I was a TA, when we got to that spot, I was really into, I was like, let me, let me raise my hand. Let me get as involved as I could. Cause I knew I wasn't very strong in that. 
Yeah, I think the technical interview is something that scares a lot of people. So uh, for anyone out there and, and for you too, you're not alone in that at all. <laughs> Can you share maybe some of the other, um, other advice you have for people who are getting ready to take that next step and to look for an engineering role? What are some of the practical things they can do to get ready? There's, there's a lot of things one can do. So of course, when it comes to the actual technical interview, practice, practice, practice. Um, definitely grab a friend, do it to yourself, um, and don't just necessarily practice with the question and you're doing it in your head and or you're kind of doing it on your own. Try to recreate the, the actual interview. So ideally, have somebody verbally tell you the question and then stand up, grab a, a dry erase marker, uh, if you have a whiteboard, great. If not, use a, a a mirror or a window and solve the problems that way. Uh, that way you just get used to that process because it's weird. So I would refer definitely recommend practice doing that. Uh, when it comes to other things, uh, there is the element of the content that you're that you have that you generate, especially when it comes to projects and your GitHub repos. I definitely encourage adding extra layers onto that so then it's consumable by recruiters because they're usually the first folks who will reach out to you or are going to be working with you when it comes to the job process. So definitely highlighting um, the technology you're using, write fantastic readmes that are very explicit, add screenshots, you know, add all the bells and whistles in your readme so then uh, recruiters can understand what what technologies you're playing with and have a better sense of who you are. Um, and then if you're so inclined, I know I don't consider myself the best writer, but I was like, let me just write blogs because it's a great way to relearn the content I just wrote a project on. But then it also serves as a kind of a resource for later on. There's been many times six months later, I'm like, wait, how did I do that thing? And I Google my own blog to find that resource. So definitely writing blogs is a great way to communicate to others how you learn, how you process, how you build as well. Thank you for sharing those great practical pieces of advice. What would be one piece of advice that you have for your younger self? And that could be starting her career in um, nonprofit Jessica, or could be starting her career in um, tech Jessica, or maybe the same piece of advice applies to both. <laughs> oh gosh, I think there's something to be said about, at least for me personally, there is this weird uh, sense of like, I, I want permission to do things. Uh, I think I was raised trying to be the good daughter and the good person and like trying to like do well in this world. And I think that um, having somebody externally for me has been really important to go, yes, you could do X. And um, being able to do that for myself is a skill I've I've learned of like, no, I, I don't need somebody and I could do it because this is what I want to do or I'm passionate. And uh, and being able to trust my own gut versus depending on outside folks, um, I think is something I would encourage younger Jessica, though she would just have to figure this out on her own with time. So I think that's the, the fun part about getting older too, but definitely just trusting your gut. <laughs> I think that's a really good point and, and something that's important for us to remember that we are a product now of all of the things that came before. Exactly. I know when I transitioned to tech, people are like, I remember thinking it for myself, I'm starting from square one. And I'm like, no, I'm not. I have 10 years of work history. I, I'm an amazing person. So like that, that is that I, I'm coming to the table with something of value. So yeah, everyone has value. It's just about how you frame it. So we've come to our final question today. Women Tech Makers is all about creating a world in which all women can thrive. And so Jessica, today the spotlight is on you. I'd love to know from your experience, what do you think is needed for us to get there? I would narrow it down to two, two things. One is to share your own story. Um, sometimes we might not think our story is remarkable or special or different, um, but we're all unique and they are. And because it's your story, it's normal for you. But for someone else, there there could be inspiration or uh, a lesson or something that might inspire them. So I recommend share your story and talk and be honest. 
And then on the flip side is to listen to other people's stories because there's not one narrative of woman or being female. And so being open to that because there's a lot of other intersex. And when it comes to like me personally, there's me as a woman, there's me as a Latina, there's me as a first generation, there's me as mixed heritage. So there's a lot of complexity to that. So I think being able to share your story and listen to others will be a huge step forward to making tech a better space for for women in general. Thank you for that. It's such an important reminder. And I want to say thank you also for sharing your story today, Jessica. It's been such a pleasure listening to you. And um, I'm so glad we were able to do this today. Thank you so much. I, I really appreciate it. Thank you. And thank you to everyone watching. Please come back again for another episode of Spotlight. Let us know what you think in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and we will see you next time. Bye.